Welcome back. What I want to do in this video is explore the beta oxidation of a, 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 an unsaturated fatty acid, and it's a, it's a polyunsaturated fatty acid, and specifically it is linoleic acid. And of course it's going to be ligated to CoA, so essentially what we have is this. And it has a double bond at carbon number 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it has 18 carbons, and it has double bonds specifically at carbons 9 carbons tw and carbon 12, and it has 18 carbons. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to really explore and, and figure out exactly how much of everything we're going to get from this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to abbreviate FADH2 as F, abbreviate NADH as N, and acetyl-CoA as A. So let's do one round of beta oxidation. In one round, I'm going to shorten it by two carbons. So that 9 is now going to be a 7. So it's, the double bond is going to be at carbon 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? So now this double bond is at carbon 7. This is carbon 10. And this is carbon 16. Right? So I generate an FADH2, an NADH, and an acetyl-CoA. Fair enough. Let's do a beta oxidation again. So it's going to shorten by two carbons again. So now this double bond is going to be at carbon 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And so this is carbon 5, this is carbon 8, and this is carbon 14. Right? Well, let's, and actually I generated an F, ADH2, an NADH, and an acetyl-CoA. Let's do another round because we can still do that, right? So I'm going to do another round of beta oxidation, and I'm going to shorten it by two carbons again. So it's going to be at carbon 3. And so now this is at carbon 3, this is carbon 6, and this is carbon 12. Okay, so now, and, and, and let, me, let me do this. I generate an FADH2, an NADH, and an acetyl-CoA. Now, this right here is where it gets interesting because now I'm going to have to use a completely different set of enzymes. And the, the next enzyme we're going to use, we actually saw in the last video, and this enzyme is called delta-3, delta-2, enoyl-CoA isomerase. And remember what this enzyme does. It essentially takes the, the cis bond between carbons 3 and 4 and turns it into a trans bond between carbons 2 and 3. So you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So this double bond is still at carbon 6, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this still has 12 carbons. This is still carbon 6, but now this is carbon 2 and this is carbon 3. And now what you, you, you see, okay, well, now we're in the conformation and the, the type of fatty acid that can undergo beta oxidation. But notice... And actually, let me draw this real quick. Actually, let me, well, let me just go ahead and say it right now. Notice that we got that double bond there without fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase. And that was the FAD dependent enzyme, right? So notice we completely bypassed that enzyme. So we end up not producing an FADH2. But notice, if we, if we still do beta oxidation, we're still going to shorten by two carbons. So this double bond is going to be at carbon 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now this is carbon 4. This is carbon 10. And what did we generate? Well, we, we didn't generate an FADH2, but we generated an NADH and an acetyl-CoA. Okay. So now... Now we're going to do the initial oxidation in beta oxidation. We're going to do the initial oxidation, and that's with FADH2. So we're going to generate an FADH2. Um, well, it uses FAD, but it's going to generate an FADH2. And so what we're going to get is this. We're going to get that trans bond in there, right? So this is carbon 3. This is carbon 4. So we're going to get something that looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So this is carbon 2, this is carbon 3, this is carbon 4, and this is carbon 10. 
Okay. Now, you might be tempted to say, oh, well, this is just going to do beta oxidation again, but it turns out that it doesn't. In fact, this process, it actually does a different enzyme. And this enzyme has a special name. It's called uh, 2,4-dienoyl. It's enoyl because it has two, it's, it's a dialkene. Dienoyl-CoA reductase. And this enzyme is NADPH dependent. Notice the P. It's, a, it's phospho-NADP or phospho NAD, and it burns the NAD pH and, rege and regenerates NADP+. Now, this should tell you something. Number one, that the cell doesn't want to have to do this very much. If, if you're, you know, if you want to supply, if, if you're going to be oxidizing fat, you want to be oxidizing saturated fat. NADPH is a molecule. It's a very precious reductant that's used for biosynthesis reactions. If you don't want to have to use it, you don't want to have to use it. So essentially, if you can avoid oxidizing this for energy, you want to avoid it. Um, essentially, this is sort of a waste. Number one, because you're burning an NADPH, but also because we bypass generating FADH2. And we bypass it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in purple, I'm going to show the steps that we bypassed the FADH2. So we bypassed it at that point, and now we just wasted an NADPH. So, but anyways, the product of this reaction, essentially you can think about it like this. You have two double bonds, and essentially this enzyme is going to reduce half of each double bond and combine them into one double bond. So it's going to look something like this. okay? And the double bond is going to be at position three, and it's going to be a trans double bond. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we have the double bond at carbon three, and here's carbon ten, right? So now we're going to use enoyl-CoA isomerase to get it in the right position at carbon 2 or the beta actually yeah the alpha carb between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon so this is enoyl-CoA isomerase and so it's going to generate something that you should recognize from beta oxidation it's an enoyl-CoA so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we got 10 carbons, here's carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 10, and we're all happy, right? So now this thing's going to go into normal beta oxidation. And so with one round of beta oxidation, we're going to shorten it by two carbons. We're going to generate what? We're going to generate, we're going to generate an NADH in this process, right? We're going to generate an NADH. We're going to generate acetyl-CoA. So... We're going to shorten by two carbons, so we're going to end up with an eight carbon fatty acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is carbon number eight. Now, and now you you know what what happens. We're going to we're going to do basically three rounds of beta oxidation, right? So I can cleave right there, right there, and right there. So I'm going to end up generating four acetyl CoA, right? Four acetyl CoA. That's going to be 3 NADH, right? And it's going to be 3 FADH2, right? So now what we have to do is we really have to just tally our total. So let, let, let's make a table. Let's make a table. Let's make a table. So here's going to be acetyl CoA. Here's FADH2 and here's NADH, right? So let's come over here. Let's come over here and, and, and regroup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark them in yellow. So here, let's do FADH2 first, because that's usually the most difficult one. So here's one, two, three, right? But then we bypassed it, right? Then we bypassed one of them, right? Then we did a round of beta oxidation. Then we got another one, so there's four, right? We keep following our work, right? So we had four. And then we got three more. So FADH2, we got seven, right? In terms of NADH, let's go back. In terms of NADH, let's do that in, in this blue color. We got one, two, three, right? One, two, three. Here's a fourth one, right? Keep following our work. We got four, and then five, and then six, seven, eight. 
So we got eight NADHs. And in terms of, in terms of um, acetyl-CoA, all we need to do is figure out the total number of carbons, assuming it's even number and it's 18, and just divide by two. And so the total number of acetyl-CoA is nine. Now there is one other consideration we have to take. And actually some, some people will actually say that we got seven NADHs. But that's not technically correct. They'll say, oh, we, got set, we only got seven NADHs. Well, the reason they say that is because we burned an NADPH, right? We burned an NADPH. So if I come over here with another tally, right? Let's make another one and say this is NADPH. So we'll put a P there. It's going to be minus one, right? So we actually generated eight NADHs, but we lost an NADPH. And some people will actually kind of combine those two, even though they are biochemically different molecules. Okay, so what did we see in the oxidation of this fatty acid? Well, we saw that we actually lose one FADH2. We get one less FADH2 than if we were to simply, um, you know, um, oxidize what? If we were to oxidize um, 18 carbons, would be stearate. If we were to oxidize this completely saturated stearate, we would have gotten what? Eight FADH2s, right? We would have gotten eight FADH2s, but we saw we only got seven, and that's because there was the double bond in there. Um, the other thing that makes this sort of a waste of a pathway is we have to burn an NADPH, and it probably isn't apparent to you in Biochem 1 yet, but in a lot of bio, in, in uh, lots of biosynthetic reactions, you, you have to use NADPH. So you're essentially wasting it on this. And it, it, if you had to choose between oxidizing saturated fat and unsaturated fat, you would definitely want to go with saturated fat because you get the maximum FADH2. And of course, in the case of saturated fat, you don't have to waste an NADPH. So this is our tally for linoleic acid. So I hope this video helped. Um, see you in the next video.